Good afternoon. I'm presenting a, a paper that looks at public investment and inclusive growth in Uganda. This is collaborative work with colleagues at the Economic Policy Research Center, notably my boss, Sarah Shewanyana, and those at Cornell University, that is Steve Younger and Elaine Hill. Basically, the reason or the basis for this study was to look was because the, pa the pace of poverty reduction, poverty reduction in Uganda was uneven, and there were calls or investigations as to find out if public investments in infrastructure, that is roads, electricity, can be used to bring about some equitable growth, especially benefiting the poor. Uh, the presentation will focus, uh, will give some background on why we focus on inclusive growth in Uganda and notably the infrastructure. The infrastructure here, it's mainly roads, health facilities, agri uh, agricultural input markets, and related items. Then the data we use, the decompositions that try to explain, we're basically trying to explain why, how, to what extent does infrastructure explain the spatial differences in poverty in Uganda. Then we also try to simulate what would happen to poverty if the infrastructure that is in the richest region is accorded to the poorest region? What would happen to poverty? And then the conclusions. By way of motivation, the drivers of economic growth and poverty are a matter of public concern in Uganda. Uganda has more or less maintained positive uh, GDP growth rates in the past 20 years. This has been uh, coupled with poverty reduction that nearly held over the 17-year period. Nonetheless, this is happening in an environment of worsening inequality. During the year, uh, during 1992 to 93 to the period 2009-10, the Gini coefficient, which is the standard measure of inequality, increased from 0.33 to 0.42. And as such, this has become a matter of public concern. Uh, we're seeing have very high growth rates, considerable reduction in, uh, in poverty, but the level of inequality is worsening, even within regions that are considered poor in Uganda. Another thing to note is that the pace of poverty reduction has reduced in the recent past. This table show, uh, shows uh, tries to demonstrate the large variation in income poverty across space in Uganda. And this, and my point of reference here, is the geographical regions. It shows the trends in income poverty mentioned from, uh, from the period 1992 to 2009-10. For the whole of Uganda, as mentioned earlier, it decreased from 55 to close to 24% over this period. And the, co the trend is consistent for both urban and rural areas. When it comes to the geographical uh, location, which is, loca uh, which is indicated by the bottom half of the table, you find that most of the progress has been recorded by central Uganda. Nonetheless, by 2009-10, there were very wide geographical differences in poverty rates. Specifically, the incidence of poverty in the poorest region, that is northern Uganda, was more than four times that of the richest region in central Uganda. I should note that this is partly due to the history of conflict that has raged, that waged in northern Uganda for around 20 years, although this stopped around 2006. Uh, previous authors have shown that growth is necessary but not a sufficient condition for sustainable reductions. And, and there is also, uh, authors point to the fact that inequality is partly, the inequality that we see increasing in Uganda is partly driven by unequal access to public goods. That is roads, both tarmac, maram roads, and all weather roads as well as access to infrastructure services. Nonetheless, also the previous literature shows that both returns and returns to education are lower in rural areas and in urban areas outside the center. So the main question here is, 
how can public investments, if at all possible, be used to reduce such discrepancies? This is what we try to answer in this paper. Uh, in terms of methods, the general approach we follow here is to estimate regression decompositions following the Ohaka Blinder style using a, a national representative survey. Uh, it's uh, the, of the type of the living standards measurement surveys uh, conducted by the World Bank. And we basically try to determine the extent to which spatial differences across the four geographical regions in Uganda, the spatial differences in outcomes are due to differences in endowments or, secondly, returns to these endowments. For example, skilled labor, infrastructure, and the like. In these estimations or regressions, our dependent variable is household consumption per adult equivalent, a more or less a standard measure of capturing welfare in such surveys where consumption is a key welfare variables. And we estimate these regions on the four geographical regions of Uganda. Most notably, we try to compare the richest region to the other three. The richest in this case, as I've shown, is the central region compared to the other three. And in this case, we are trying to see if the poorer regions had either the endowments or returns to endowments similar to what is happening in central region. What could be the impact on poverty? Uh, for just as way of exposition, if you have two regions, say northern and central, the, uh, the decomposition is expressed as below is the log of consumption expenditure, which is a function of a number of determinants of welfare, like education attainment of the household head and the community's infrastructure. I should note from the onset that we use community infrastructure rather than individual household infrastructure to reduce issues, uh, a number of issues relating to collinearity. So the X's are the respondents, so the household's endowments, that specifically welfare producing assets that a household has or they have in their community. For example, I should, and then the bitters are the returns to these endowments. When I say they have in their community, when you include a variable like uh, having electricity, this refers to having electricity in the community. It doesn't mean that this particular household is connected to the national grid. And then we estimate the expected value of the difference in welfare of these two regions as expressed between. And most especially, if we rearrange those equation two, we get the average difference in the log of welfare between these two regions composed of these two terms. The first term shows the return effect, that is the difference in average welfare that is due to rates of return. Those are the betas of given any two regions, for example, central and northern Uganda. Then the second term is the endowment effect, which shows the difference in the average welfare that is due to difference in values of the X's. For example, education attainment of the household aid between the two regions. In terms of the data, we use the Uganda National Household Survey. There have been other surveys in Uganda since this survey, but these are more or less panel surveys and are far smaller in size. So this survey was conducted during May 2009 and April 2010 by the Uganda Bureau of Statistics, and it covered all areas and all geographical regions of Uganda. It is similar to the Living Standards Measurement Survey are promoted by the World Bank. In terms of sampling strategy, it's based on the two-stage sampling strategy. In the, first, uh, in the first stage, the enumeration area is the principal sampling unit. And once this is selected, 10 households are randomly selected from each selected enumeration area. A brief about the regression decompositions we make. As I mentioned, the dependent variable is constant throughout all these three or four decompositions we make in this case. It's household expenditure per adult equivalent. The explanatory variables are physical infrastructure, access to roads, access to markets, that is uh, input markets, output markets, health facilities, 
phone services. We also throw in some variables, in, including access to economic activities, Half, having a factory within 10 kilometers of the center of this particular uh, community or local council one, as we call it in Uganda. The other variables relate to the household heads characteristics, and this we do it because, for example, education attainment is a key endowment. The household age, uh, age attainment, as well as the spatial location. As I mentioned, the infrastructure regressors are all at the community, so we don't look at whether how far a household is from a given the most commonly used health facility, but how far the community is from the most commonly used health facility. Uh, I should note there are a number of issues as I go to the first, to, to explaining uh, the first decomposition between endowments and rates of return to endowments. They are most, there is, uh, the presence of infrastructure in a community or LC1 is highly collinear. The, the communities that have health facilities are more likely to have electricity, they are more, more likely to have uh, uh, beta roads, and this, uh, as I'll show in our, uh, as, as I show in, our, in some of our results, drives some of the uh, results we find. So in, in, in the same way, it's very risky to interpret such individual coefficients as returns because of such collinearity. So in the estimations, which I, I'll show here, we focus more on explaining what we call like the all health infrastructure, uh, all physical infrastructure, or, or all physical infrastructure and health because of such issues of collinearity. And the main interpretation for this, for, for, for example, for endowments, is the percentage of communities that report, for example, having a public hospital or a public health center within facilities. Uh, endowments are shown by these four columns, and the rates of return to endowments are, are shown by these four, the first four columns. If I start with endowments, when it comes to infrastructure, which is indicated here, we find that uh, central Uganda has access to the, best endo, uh, 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 to the best infrastructure in Uganda. Nearly 81 of communities have access to an all-season roads compared to much lower rates in the other areas of Uganda. And this is more or less consistent, I think, with the exception of for example, health infrastructure, uh, for which results we, we don't show here. The other issue we note that, uh, again, central, when it comes to the other, so it's mainly in the estimations we're going to compare these items of all infrastructure to the items of uh, like education attainment. When it comes to endowments relating to education, again, central Uganda has better access to these kinds of endowments. The household heads in central Uganda have better education attainment, but the differences are not as large as the ones we see with physical inf infrastructure. Nonetheless, when it comes to higher education attainment, that is having either having uh, attained four years of secondary education or more, then the differences between central Uganda and the rest of the country become very large. Partly, this might reflect the fact that uh, the idea that there are more household heads in Uganda, in central Uganda, who have higher education attainment might be because of migration, because these rates here at least are similar across the, the four regions. When it comes here, it appears those highly educated individuals move to central Uganda, and partly because this uh, this is the region with the most urban areas, and as I, uh, as I indicate later, it's the region where it's the region where that has better access to f facilities. When it comes to access to the returns to endowments, again, when you look at if having access to physical infrastructure improves the welfare of households in Central Uganda by only 15 percent. 
here compared to 4% in eastern and 11% in northern. Nonetheless, we note that most of the infrastructure effects in central Uganda are driven by access to electricity. If we take away electricity, which is shown by the estimations here, the rates of return in central Uganda are far, far less compared to the previous case. Yeah, I think I said this. So basically, the returns to physical infrastructure in central Uganda, I mean, are highest, but regional, inf dif regional differences are influenced by electricity. Overall, that table shows that there are no equity efficiency trade-offs for non-electricity infrastructure. If you're providing such kinds of uh, 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 infrastructure, then they are, you are unlikely to receive uh, uh, significant changes in the welfare distribution in Uganda. Then I move to the, the, uh, uh, to the Ohaka blender decompositions. And basically, again, we try to see how much of the variations in welfare is explained by endowments and household, and household characteristics, as well as that that is unexplained. This particular chart, again, I'll start with endowments. It shows that, uh, and in this case, for this decomposition, we are comparing the three poorer regions to the richest, that is uh, central Uganda. What these results show here is that if you were to give the kind of endowments in central Uganda to, those, to the people in these other regions, it will only improve welfare by between 20 and 22 percent, I mean 20 and 25 percent. Half of this is due to household characteristics like education attainment, and the other half is due to infrastructure. However, we should note that a lot of the variations in these places are unexplained. Finally, we try to look at the poverty in, uh, impacts of social infrastructure, and as I mentioned, basically we're looking at the returns to social infrastructure investments here we regress household consumption on household variables, and the interpretation here can be two. First, it can be the change in the mean welfare associated with a particular variable, or the impact of a particular variable on poverty, which we take further by simulating the shift in the original welfare distribution of the regressor multiplied by its mean value, and then we recalculate the poverty headcount for the simulated distribution and compare it to the original headcount. Basically, the results are shown here. And again, I will focus on the all education and the all infrastructure. We find that uh, improving, if we were to compare the two, improving access to education would generate far more returns in Uganda and across the four regions compared to improving access to uh, infrastructure. I should note that although the infrastructure variable here is very high, it's conditioned on the fact that this region has far greater access of infrastructure in Uganda. As I wind up, uh, yeah, the previous chart was showing that the poverty impacts of existing education is far greater than those of physical infrastructure. The differences in eastern region are especially large, and for the entire country, education attainment contributes to around a 15 percentage point reduction in poverty, whereas uh, uh, existing infrastructure contributes only 10. Central, in the central region, the returns to education and infrastructure are not that very greater than the other regions. Our results suggest that there is not a too severe trade-off between equity and efficiency in public investments. The returns to endowments are similar in less endowed region than to those in, the reg in central Uganda, especially in the north, but also in eastern and western Uganda. As such, any attempt to distribute social and physical infrastructure more equitably will not be very costly in terms of sacrifice rates of return. Bringing other regions' physical infrastructure 
to the level of central Uganda will only have a modest impact on poverty as has been demonstrated. So the returns to education are much bigger and this is what we propose that this should be the focus of any public interventions. Specifically investments in education may do better at equalizing poverty rates than investments in infrastructure. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.